Hey, what's happening gamers? I'm K-Wing and I'm super excited that DuckTales Remastered is finally here. I played it, beat it, and bless my bagpipes, it's awesome. But don't take my word for it, find out why DuckTales is rewriting history right now. I still remember the reveal like yesterday. Honestly though, I never thought this game would happen. An HD remake of one of my favorite games? Impossible. I mean, DuckTales was a cult favorite of many fans of the NES when they were kids. So when we heard a remake was coming and that Capcom was involved, everyone thought they might foul it up. See, things have changed a lot since 1989, peoples. Disney and Capcom don't make games together, and licensing properties like this is a copyright nightmare. In fact, Disney Interactive handles all of Disney's games themselves nowadays just for that reason. Back when I interviewed Capcom at PAX East, every time I asked them how they were able to license a Disney game again, they ducked all my questions. I guess how this game exists is all thanks to that Disney magic that Walt used to talk about. Still, if you're going to remake a beloved classic, there's only one company you want working on it. And that's the wizards of 2D modern gaming, WayForward Technology. For many on the NES, DuckTales is a quintessential example of platforming perfection, even besting the plumber and the speedster in some folks' eyes. So WayForward had a lot of expectations to live up to. Rest assured though, the gameplay is just as you remember it and it's only been tweaked just a wee bit. Take Scrooge's iconic pogo attack of death, for instance. The developer gave the move its own button now, but for purists, you can turn on the hard pogo and then simply press down to use it. When I first played this game, out of habit I kept pressing down to do the move, and well, things didn't really go according to plan, especially in the Amazon. Stupid thorns of death. One of the things that's really cool about this game is all the levels from the original are back and they've been lovingly reproduced to the very letter. Yet because the NES game was so, so short, WayForward wanted to add even more content, which I'm all for. So the stages have been extended and feature 40% brand spanking new content just for this game, including an all new tutorial level inside Scrooge's bank for the first time being able to take a swim in Scrooge's money bin and an epilogue straight out of something from Castlevania. At the start of the game, just like in the original, players are able to choose what treasure you want to go and look for. The whole point of the game is once again to make sure Scrooge becomes the richest duck in the entire world by collecting lots of colored gems. At the end of every level, the computer will tally up your score, which is then used to increase the size of McDuck's money bin and purchase extras in the extras place. Unlike before, each level has players searching for items to complete the first act of a stage, like finding all the gold coins in the Amazon or gathering a spell from Transylvania. These additional tasks give the classic game new life and at the same time help folks relive the 1987 animated show. Graphics-wise, this game is absolutely gorgeous. Just look at it! I mean, seriously, look at it! Everything in this game features redefined hand-drawn visuals, and thanks to cells provided by Disney themselves, creates an authentic Disney experience. WayForward said all the backgrounds were plucked right out of Disney's vault, too. Although the visuals wasn't the only aspect of this game that got gyro, so did the music and sound effects. Vert, WayForward's resident composer, is at it again and did a fantastic job of tributing the classic soundtrack but added its own tailspin to it? Yeah, I guess that doesn't work. It's a perfect blend of 8-bit meets Disney Afternoon, and it sounds amazing. Also, he has some stellar guitar solos sandwiched throughout. I'm happy to say all of the tunes are catchy as ever and made me want to flock to the dance floor. In the sound department, Disney went to infinity and beyond by getting most of the principal cast from the animated series to reprise their roles, which is legendary, including the one and only Alan Young, the voice of Scrooge McDuck, who's 94 years old. Pack my park at Duckworth. We're headed for the Himalayas to hunt for the lost crown of Genghis Khan. Shall I forward your call, sir? Launchpad. I told you to land in the center of the mountain range, not in the center of a mountain. Gee, Mr. McD, I thought that crash was rock solid. The only rocks around here are the ones inside your head. This was incredibly rad because it feels like you're watching a lost episode of the hit Disney cartoon show. I don't know about all of you, but I would love to see this series come back and maybe finally get the fourth volume on DVD Disney. That being said, I still have some issues with DuckTales. First off, let me just say I don't agree with the pacing problem most of the critics have said in regards to the cutscenes. 
since, well, you can, you know, turn them off. I could see where they're coming from if, you know, you couldn't turn off the scenes, but since you can, well, yeah. Still, that doesn't mean this game doesn't get away scot-free by any means. No, no, no. Take the African Mines, for example. In 20-some years, Scrooge still drowns by water when he's a duck. Now I know this may seem silly to some of you, but it annoyed me back then, and guess what? It still does now. You can easily get away with this back in 1989, peoples, but not in 2013. I did find it funny, though, the developer showed that the water was boiling as a means to cover their tracks. But we're moving on. While the difficulty is more player-driven error, just like the original game, that isn't the case with many of the boss battles, which felt very unbalanced at times. Some bosses take less hits, others are wicked annoying and unpredictable. I really think this could have been corrected by adding an enemy life bar, though, since some bosses take 12 to 15 hits to defeat. No, no, really, they do. I'm, I'm serious, especially that Amazon boss. Oh, I hated that guy. Hated him so, so much. And lastly, the extras didn't pique my interest either. All the money you've collected is only used to unlock extras and you can't choose what you want to buy! Instead, players are forced to purchase concept art and other things they don't want before the really good stuff, such as the game's actual soundtrack. Still, I suppose completionists will probably love getting 100% in this game. Me, not so much. Still, even with my minor nitpicks aside, Junior Woodchucks, I'm happy to report this game is definitely all it's quacked up to be. Probably my favorite part of this game, though, was definitely the moon base. In fact, when I was playing this game for the very first time, I saved the moon for my final level because the moon is an iconic aspect of DuckTales the video game. Plus, Gizmo Duck has more than a 10 second cameo now. He blasts all the foes in front of Scrooge to tiny bits. I have to say that the different difficulties they've included really keeps you on your toes and beginners will love having infinite lives on easy. Now for veteran players, you'll be able to fly through normal and hard mode like Launchpad McQuack. Though I don't suggest playing it on Expert just yet, unless of course you enjoy wallowing in anguish. Oh, and uh, before I forget, it's also really great to see characters have extended roles in this game. From Webigail, the boys, even Launchpad, but even Mrs. Beakley gets more of a starring role in the stages aiding Scrooge with snacks, and Bubba Duck comes and smashes the ice for Scrooge instead of just, you know, being in the game for a second. That and the minecart and plane level are great additions and very exciting to play too. In conclusion, DuckTales Remastered is a wealth of fun and adventure that you and your family can bank on. Yes, the difficulty at times can have you tearing your feathers out, but if you're smarter than the smarties and tougher than the toughies, you can conquer this game too. Just keep in mind, the game is a tad on the short side, running roughly only two hours. Although the heartfelt nostalgia will leave you soaring, and the replay value will keep you revisiting the webbed billionaire in Duckburg. Personally, I was really surprised by what this eShop game had to offer, and I think you will be too, folks. Because this is a game you'll treasure for years to come, and is totally worth its weight in gold. Er, uh, digital currency. Oh, and uh, Capcom off the record? If you can't do Mega Man justice during your company's 30th anniversary, well, just grab on to some DuckTales. Can't get enough DuckTales? Why not check out my full walkthrough going on right now on my Let's Play channel. Playlist is in the description. And with my plug all said and done, thank you so much for watching another of my reviews. If you found this review helpful, don't forget to hit that like button and tell your friends and family to share this video too. Or else. If you didn't like this review, tell me why. And before we bid adieu, in the comments section below, tell me who your favorite DuckTales character is. Mine's a toss between Mr. McDuck and Gizmo Duck. Well, until we meet again, gamers, God bless and happy gaming. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, see ya!